Joining me now to take a look at where the field stands at this moment is Marcos Mulitzis. He's, of course, founder of Daily Coast and someone that always is keeping a close eye on the 2020 Democratic field and I think really has his finger on the pulse of sort of the Democratic Party's goal in your corner, I think, is trying to find the most electable progressive. So let me start with this. Beto O'Rourke, is he, in your mind, a progressive? <laughs> God, that word's so vague. I think he, he <laughs> definitely could wear the label. At, and uh, I think we get too hung up on, on that label sometimes, who's progressive, who's more progressive. They all have uh, issues that they're good and not so good on. I mean, Beto yesterday was talking about the Supreme Court in a way that's really appealing to progressives, about term limits on the Supreme Court mm -hmm. and maybe even expanding the number of, of uh, uh, justices on that Supreme Court. So... That's very progressive. So if you're gonna, you know, so sure, let's let's call him progressive. Let me play for you uh, in his interview uh, with Gail King. Here's what he said about universal health care. I want you to take a listen. The goal should be universal, guaranteed, high quality health care. Um, I think we complement, supplement those who have private employer insurance with the ability to be covered under Medicare. That allows us uh, sooner than almost any other plan to ensure every single American has the ability to see a doctor, afford their prescriptions, or take their child to a therapist. Are you from the Medicare for All? I think Medicare for All is one of the possible paths. Let me ask this to you, Marcos, which is this. Is, is there, are there litmus tests that are that specific when it comes to, for instance, Medicare for All and universal health care? Or did he give you a satisfactory answer that he clearly is in the camp closer to where Amy Klobuchar says, which is, all right, we're going to, we have the system that we got, let's build upon it. Right. He's trying to thread that needle between just saying, yep. yes, Medicare for all, and, oh, no, some people might be worried about people losing their private uh, employer-provided uh, health insurance. Easy answer is going to win every single time. I mean, just say, yeah, everybody should have health care, period. How we right. get there? Uh, Medicare for all, definitely. It's one of those ways. So he is... Boy, he's trying to thread that needle, and it makes that answer far more complicated than it needs to be. And I'm actually kind of surprised, given the experience he had uh, over the last year running for Senate, that he hasn't been able to hone in some of these sort of easy questions into a more digestible answer. And I think that a lot speaks to the fact that running for president is a lot different than running for Senate. Running for Senate, 100% of Democrats loved him. He was a national hero. Suddenly you run for president, 85% yeah. of Democrats are already gunning for you and trying to nitpick <laughs> everything you say. And it's a different environment. And I'm surprised he wasn't prepared for that. You know, it's interesting. You know, the Wall Street Journal has had a great little line on him. And I'm curious if you think this is an asset or a liability in a Democratic primary these days. He said, the Wall Street Journal writes, Mr. O'Rourke's campaign history shows his ability to adapt to political circumstances and develop a campaign message to fit the times and his audience. Now, the same thing could have been said about a young candidate running for president in 2007 named Barack Obama. Is that something that in today's Democratic primary, that primary, you think your primary voters, the people that you, you spend a lot of time with, are they going to accept that kind of, well, you know, pragmatism, I guess, if you will? Uh, there's, there's a pragmatism is absolutely essential. Uh, but the reality is that things like Medicare for All are popular. Things like the Green uh, Deal for All are popular. These are not electoral deal breakers. So you can be fully progressive knowing that there's really not going to be a lot of bleed within the party basis. Trump has got 90 percent of Republicans. The Democratic nominee is going to have 90 percent of Democrats. There's not going to be a lot of real right. uh, uh, voters that are really up for grabs. The question is, who gets their voters to the polls? And Democrats historically have had a harder time doing that. And if you could come up with a message that motivates young voters and uh, people of color and right. single women to vote, that dramatically changes the equation. So I think... Uh, um, there is a hunger for clear, unadulterated, unambiguous, progressive message. And anybody that, that tries to sort of mealy mouth that is going to have yeah. trouble moving forward. Look, you have made it clear before you're, you're, you're a fan of both Kamala Harris and Elizabeth Warren. Uh, I'm yes. curious what you make of the following uh, from Politico about a little bit of backlash against the attention that Beto has gotten. Uh, here's Politico today. The breathless sweeps like cable television coverage that greeted the former Texas congressman's first campaign events stunned and frustrated many Democratic operatives, particularly women. You viewed it as an example of the double standard at work in the historically diverse presidential field. To them, O'Rourke, a white male candidate, had already been ordained the next sensation, his entry into the race greased by live television shots and O'Rourke-centric panels. Let me ask you this, though. Is this, is this Beto O'Rourke's fault? 
And is this something? <laughs> and what is he supposed to do about this supposed backlash? You know, you've heard people not liking the fact that he did the campaign video with his wife and she didn't say anything, things like that. Is this stuff that sh will matter to voters? I think long term, I, the short term rollout, I don't think matters. The long term sort of broader themes actually do matter. And this is a Democratic Party that is interested, that uh, it's dominated by women, dominated by people of color, and are f really asserting themselves an interest in having a nominee that reflects that party base. And so, uh, Beto himself admitted that he was at a disadvantage being a white male. Joe Biden as well. And he's going to get the circus yeah. treatment if he runs as well. And, and sure. is there a double standard? Of course there's a double standard. But I don't think the media has the power it used to do. And I think the ability right. of Harris and Warren to speak directly to their supporters without that media filter is going to completely change the game. And long term, I, I'm still, I am think it's going to, the, the nominee is going to be a woman. Uh, and, and that's the limb I'm going to sit on. Right. <laughs> I could I know be you wrong. Are. But I'm going to make you. There. All right. I'm going to make you. This is the last one. You brought up Joe Biden. I know you believe the party that Biden and Bernie, because they're a little connected with the past, that that's going to be a challenge for them. But if Joe Biden calls you up tonight and says, Marcos, I know you think I'm not the best candidate in this field. Give me some advice how to prove you wrong. Uh, I don't. I don't think there's there's advice. Uh, I, I'm I'm forward looking. That doesn't mean I'd say don't run. Uh, I remember four years ago laughing at the 17 Republicans who were running for president, and thinking that they were going to tear each other up, allowing a Democrat to just waltz into the White House. And in, instead, what you had are 17 people spreading the Republican message, speaking to different parts of the party base. So if 15 Democrats want to run talking about democratic issues, one-upping each other on democratic policy, I actually think that's a good thing in the end. Does that mean I think he has a chance of winning? No, I don't think he has a chance of winning. But is it a bad thing that he runs? I don't think that's a bad thing. And you'd still support him if he's the nominee? Oh, absolutely. I'd support every single one of them. And I think if you ask almost any Democrat, yeah. you're going to get that same answer. Hey, very quickly, we noticed that there was something with your, uh, the straw poll, the, the Daily Coast straw poll. Has it been sabotaged by the Bernie bros? <laughs> they are very, very organized. Now, uh, we made a mistake where uh, uh, they're allowed to cheat a little bit, which, which was uh, not exactly cool. But um, there's nothing wrong with being organized online. And I actually want to see all the candidates learn how to organize their, uh, their supporters online, because I think that'll be very, very helpful moving into 2020 when we have a nominee. So they should all be doing their so best to get you, their supporters say, online. All right. If they if he's figured out how to how to get around some of these things, then the other others should, too. That's your uh, lesson. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the lesson is that I need to do my part <laughs> to make the, the straw poll, you know, harder to game. But the fact is that we don't we are OK with people being motivated and driving their supporters to the poll. And, and uh, uh, I don't think there's any doubt that in the online world, uh, Bernie Sanders has the most engaged, most right. uh, motivated supporters and the other campaigns need to catch up. I don't think it's determinative. I don't think it's going right. to it's going to make a decision one way or the other. But it's very, very helpful. Just don't end up calling Michael Cohen's friends to help rig <laughs> online polls. Anyway, Marcos uh, uh, uh thanks for coming on. Always good to hear your views on this race. Always Much a pleasure. Appreciate it. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel. So thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Beat the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.